friends. So I've been waiting for my cucumbers to pop up and apparently some of them did pop up. Like that right there. But the leaves were attacked by something. And likewise with this one, there are three plants that have been beheaded. I hope they survive. Likewise with that one. However, I see something sprouting in this one and something in that one. And this one was beheaded. So we'll see if they pop up. It's quite frustrating. So I don't know what's going on. Same thing with my chili peppers. They're slow to come up. Just really slow and I don't know if their tops have been eaten like that one. It looks like something took off the top of it. Um, so I hope that they survive and keep growing upwards and onwards. Same with my tomatoes. Something ate all the leaves off of it. I don't know if they're birds or slugs. Not sure. So guys, I've been delaying work on this garden bed because I was hoping that the cilantro would um, mature and brown these seeds here, the coriander seeds. But since they're staying green and it's taking forever to turn brown, I'm just going to harvest them all up, clean out this bed, and that way I can sow my corn in this bed here because at the moment it's full of these um, tatsoi flowers and stuff like that. <clears throat> so this was, I think, um, just some kind of spare brassica seed. Um, so I'm going to pull this up and give it to the chickens and clean up this whole garden bed. And... I'm going to stick my corn in here and then I can prop it up. <clears throat> so here we go. So as you can see the cilantro seeds or coriander seeds, the flowers um, come up in this umbel shape and then from that the seeds form. And so what I'm doing is I'm cutting it at the base of the umbel and later on I can just pull off the each of the seeds and stick it as a spice in soups and all kinds of things. So I have here quite a bit already. And in fact, a few of them are dried and brown so I can reseed the cilantro very easily. And I have a lot of seeds so I probably should have done this sooner because let me show you, the corn is really tall and it needs to go in this bed. I, I was waiting as long as I could and I couldn't wait any longer. So we'll look at the corn here. The corn is so tall now. In corn row I have about 20 corns, but this here is a lot of corn and I need to put it in that garden bed. And it's perfect for a little square bed here because then I can prop it together kind of like and close it together so that the corn can cross pollinate each other to make the corn kernels in the cob. So um, that's what I plan to do in this garden bed. And in fact, I gave quite a few corn to my siblings. And now I even thought that I was going to grow some more for my other sibling, but I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't really had a chance to go visit. So I have more corn over here. So I have more corn over here and it's about a week or a week and a half younger than the corn I just showed you. And this is from Burgess Seeds. And this is a, another type of corn, sweet corn. The other one was um, Silver Queen or something like that uh, by Burpee. And this one is Honey and Pearl sweet corn. So it's gonna have two colors of corn kernels. I also have to clean up all that borage back there so that it doesn't seed itself into my garden in here. And I hope I can do that carefully so that it doesn't self-seed in here. 
because I don't want to have to dig that up later either. So I pulled up the brassica that was in that garden bed and as you can see chickens love brassica leaves. They just go to town on it and they'll de-stem this in like minutes. Now I've cleared most of this bed out except for that Swiss chard, rhubarb chard, and that one there, and this sunflower here. So I may regret this decision not to clear it out because now I have a very small amount of room for the corn. Um, next, my next task is to um, shovel up some of this topsoil and shift it over to that side where it had the same things growing. It had tatsoi, pakchoi, rhubarb chard, and regular rainbow chard. And I just can't get myself to kill any sunflowers because I love them so much. And these are new and producing well so I really don't want to get rid of the chard. So I'll just plant as much corn as I can and kind of go in between there and see how it goes. So I shifted a lot of the soil over to this side because it was kind of low and as you can see there were um, some tatsoi and pakchoi seeds, seed pods. So if they do grow here it's fine. And I moved a lot over to there. At some point I'm going to have to clean that bed but for now I'm going to leave it. Okay, and I brought in new soil and this is that really high rich um, nutrient soil and I'm going to mix it in with that soil so it won't be too strong. And then I'm going to plant the, um, the corn in there. Now I've mixed the miracle Grow in-ground soil in here to supplement and I mixed it with the soil that was already in there so it won't be too strong and I'm going to sow these corn seeds I mean corn seedlings into there it's probably way too late the, um, by now the roots are probably all tangled together so it's going to be difficult and but this way I can increase the number of these sideboards and kind of keep the corn together and at some point I can pull out those other plants and I can sow in between them so we'll see what happens. There we have it. I kind of sowed them, uh, planted them really close, close together, um, probably closer than it asks for but that's okay. I want it to fill in and I'm going to mound it so that it doesn't fall over as well as putting um, some kind of barrier at the periphery so it doesn't knock over when it gets taller. And I'm leaving space here for either tomatoes or some other plants because I'm going to see if my sibling wants the other corn. So this is the Silver Queen Hybrid. Burgess, Burgess um, honey and peach, I mean honey and pearl. Another thing I'm doing is since my seedlings are getting so tall and starting to flower, I need to, for my tomatoes, I need to transplant them into some pots and What I plan to do is try to grow the similar plants together. So here I have Kellogg's breakfast tomato and I, I'm going to be transferring it into this pot and over here, which isn't very far away, I already transplanted a Kellogg's breakfast and it's doing great and I should have probably transplanted the other one sooner rather than waiting this long. Um, so I plan to transplant everything and then put like plants together so that they don't get cross-pollinated together and 
that way perhaps I can save the seeds for next year because I have so many varieties this year that I'm growing. So I'll put all the Kellogg's breakfast together and then over here I have vintage wine tomato and it's pretty tall and then I'm, I'm going to transplant into this grow bag a chocolate stripes tomato and then as I grow them I'm going to move them um, into places before they start to flower um, put them into areas where only that kind of plant will be so um, Kellogg's with the Kellogg's vintage wine with the vintage wine um, chocolate stripes with chocolate stripes so that way when the bees cross pollinate they'll just cross pollinate similar ones together more likely so here they are here's one I better move this one actually because it's close to my beef steak so I'm gonna have to move that soon this is the other one and the two Kellogg's breakfasts side by side here hi friends I finally transplanted my persimmon it was in a smaller pot and this is probably twice as big of a pot and it's doing great I love the leaves and everything it, and I'm putting it in the shade for a few days I just watered it in and gave it good new soil so it has a good start some of the leaves dried out because i forgot about it and it was in the back of the garden in the far corner by my lemon tree so i put it up close and personal because i like it so much i want to take care of it and i want to keep my eye on it so i want it close to me closer to the house next i potted up some more of the vintage wine the um, chocolate stripes and their individual pots are potted them up so that I have, uh, I might do a trio of each. Next, I transplanted my chrysanthemums, the Robinsons variety, because um, there are about one, two, three, four, five, five or six plants, and they were in this um, strawberry container that had um, strawberries in them and then they had holes at the bottom and at the top perfect um, container for growing stuff and and it had lots of roots down below so I finally potted it into the ground and hopefully it'll do really really well now I had potted some melons here early early in the season and actually the ones that grow in the ground do a lot better than the ones in pots but anyhow um, I didn't know what they were until I finally looked at the label that I luckily put down it's Kajari melon so I'm gonna have one two three plants four plants of Kajari melons that is so crazy and I kind of probably grew them too close but we'll see um, I'm gonna have them climb up this trellis this fencing here and hopefully it gives me lots of fruits so the kids can have it um, all summer long. I believe that is the mouse melon. See how tiny the leaves are? And it's taking a long time to come up, but it finally came up of all the early seeds that I potted up in this garden bed in my enclosure. So I'm really happy that it's, it's coming up because the, um, when you buy the seeds, there are only probably like five or eight seeds. And I use them all, <laughs> so I don't have any more cucumelon seeds. Now in this strawberry container I grew loofah. I thought I put four seeds. I may have put three and out popped three. For the longest time it was two of these and then finally that one popped up today when I actually looked at it. So I'm going to try to transplant it somewhere that it can climb because once it gets going it's gonna it's gonna grow really 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 big and I hope I can get some loofahs um, to use and hopefully I'm successful at it because I'd love to use that as a 
sustainable source of product for the loofah for washing dishes with or cleaning the body with, scrubbing stuff with. I love that idea. Hi friends, I'm ready to make another shipment of uh, plants over to my siblings and my family's house and my parents' house. So I have over here the Burgess corn, uh, honey and nut or something like that, honey and peaches, something like that. And the Tigger melon and this is two of the Garden Sweet cucumbers and a Kellogg's breakfast, a vintage wine, and another Kellogg's breakfast and vintage wine. So someone's household's gonna get two of those. And another household's gonna get two vintage wines and two um, Kellogg's breakfast. So here's the other set of vintage wine and Kellogg's breakfast. And then here I have a uh, Black Beauty zucchini. It's already turning yellow because I had pricked out the other uh, zucchini and this is the only one left in the ground. I mean in the pot. So I'm going to stick it in the ground and it'll turn green again. And then over here I have in each pot I have two Crenshaw. No, I'm sorry. Two Crimson Sweet Watermelons in that one and in that one. So they'll prick it out and have two separate plants. And then there's two plants over here of the ticker, ticker melon. So each household's going to get a ticker melon. And I'm about to bring it over right now. So that's the advantage of growing a bunch. Um, it takes hardly any time for one person to sow the seeds. And if they could sow multiple seeds for everyone else and you know, if people were assigned different seeds to grow uh, for the other folks, you know, you would have a ton of plants. So it was easy for me to grow all this stuff and supply it to my siblings and, and then they can just transplant it into the ground. So I love that idea so much and I'm going to do that from now going on, going forward. Hi friends. I'm sorry I haven't been posting too much lately. I've been sick with the flu for several, several, several days and I've just been down and out. Every time I'd come out here for just a few minutes to water plants or to check out if plants are drying out and I'd go back inside. So here I have my hollyhock blooming, finally. Um, this is the burgundy one. I have a pink one over there. Um, and then let me show you what I've been trying to do when I can get up and do a few things. Over here I transplanted from my little seedling pots into the ground. These are, oh gosh, I've, I didn't label them and now I've forgotten. Oh gosh, what are they? Mm. See, that's what happens when you rely on your memory. You think that you're going to remember and then you don't. Oh my goodness, I don't remember. Oh, um, I think there are two Armenian cucumbers. There we go, I think. And into the ground I potted this Ashley cucumber next to my green bean row, pole beans. And over here I transplanted two Burgess um, cantaloupe vine peach variety. And I sowed them close to each other. I planted them close to each other so that when they pollinate, they pollinate each other, the, the uh, bees and things, so that I won't have too many that are mixed up in case I want to keep the seeds. Over here I have something interesting popping up. I have no idea what it is, so I'm going to wait and see what it is. And a few what I think are um, <clears throat> sunflowers, I think. And then over here is a lemon cucumber from Johnny Seeds. Look at this craziness that is my sunflower. <laughs> Isn't it glorious? <clears throat> and beneath it my overwintered eggplant which is starting to make 
blooms already. So that's what's great about overwinter plants. They'll make the fruit and they'll come back faster than if you were to get to start from a seedling because as you can see all my seedlings are still really tiny and for some reason I'm not complaining but this year is a lot cooler like May and June have been really really cool and kind of um, not very sunny it's been a really mild um, early summer for us in my garden enclosure space, uh, finally one of the peppers is getting pretty big right there. As you can see, that one plant that is now three inches tall. And then a couple plants over there. But for some reason I sowed lots of pepper seeds over here and I mean for some reason they did not come up. It's not been hot enough I guess. And then, to my surprise, a cucumelon came up of all the cucumbers that I sowed the seeds in there. And then out here, in, outside of the enclosure, I have two more cucumelons so that they can pollinate each other, or the, the bees can. And over here, my Kajari melons are, I have three here, and I'm going to kind of climb them up this post here and possibly up my beautiful other huge sunflower look at all those blooms so many i'm definitely gonna get one of the seed heads to get the seeds from because this one really flowers prolifically gorgeous 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 we've purchased these um, feeders and waterers for the chickens a while back but we find my husband finally put them up so that's pretty cool love it corn row is doing fantastic the, <laughs> I mean every day I come out here and look at them they are so much taller already the plants and then in addition to this sunflower is growing so fast right next to them and kind of weaving out this way I tried to pop it up but didn't do such a good job but it's okay so into corn so like I said in the last video in corn row I added some trellises here and over here I said I had grown Crenshaw melon right there the seedling and then I put two more seeds in there but they haven't popped up yet and we'll see if they do so that they can climb this trellis and next to the shade of the chicken run um, I stuck two orange tender sweet watermelons next to each other so that the bees and stuff can pollinate them together with each other at least very closely. And then over here, I believe these are sunflowers, but um, I also stuck two black diamond watermelon seeds in there and also a lemon cucumber. So we'll see what pops up and it can climb this trellis. So it kind of looks pretty with that shade cloth and then the, um, the darker trellises. And we have been plucking so many golden raspberries and my family, my kids, my husband love them so much. So next year I'm going to do some, um, some more upkeep on this and fertilize it more so it'll grow even bigger and grow more fruit. And here my donut peaches are turning red, but they're still hard and still a little bit small. So, but there are so, so many. Oh my goodness. I love it so much. So we're going to have that as well as apricots. So let me show the, show the apricots. There are the apricots. And there are some more on some other branches, but they're just kind of here and there, but quite a few. Quite a few apples as well. However, they're very green, and a few of them have been um, like broken off or fallen off the apples. So I don't know if it's some critter climbing up the trees or birds landing on it and breaking the the fruits off of them. Oh, that's unfortunate. So one of my tigger melons made it, but the other ones really shriveled up. So I'm not sure what happened. But that's really annoying. I was hoping to have more. 
My bachelor's buttons are blooming and I love this blue, electric blue, nearly purple. It looks, it comes across on camera as purple, but it's really a blue color. Yeah, so every time I put my camera to it, it comes out as purple, but it's more blue. The center's purple, but the outer petals are blue. And then this, um, what is this called? Oh, this loofah is not doing too hot. I'm not sure why. Let me show you its sister plant over on the other side of the trellis. Its sister plant is doing great. I have to send some kids out to pick some strawberries because I have some red strawberries down there and back there as well. So I'm going to have to get those before critters get to them first. So I transplanted a lot of my tomato seedlings into bigger pots and I put them in the same category. So here I have five pots of the chocolate striped tomatoes and then I have five pots of the Kellogg's breakfast over yonder. Let me show you. So five pots of the Kellogg's breakfast over here. They're just kind of in a row here. And four pots of the vintage wine tomato right here. I'm trying to keep it so that when they, when the pollinators pollinate them, they'll kind of be um, the same type of tomatoes. Um, I mean, I'm sure they need longer distances apart in order to be more pure, but this is the best I can do with so many plants. I'm trying to grow a lot in a small space. Here's another view of that massive t sunflower plant. Oh my goodness. There are so many blooms on this. I had already harvested some to make a beautiful bouquet for my daughter's great graduation. So it was nice. I put some sunflowers and up against that I put this beautiful bachelor's button and